The Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon is one of the most capable cars off-road, and this is likely the only time you'll ever see one off-road because they spend 99% of their time terrorizing streets. But we've got some good news. This is an all-new model, which means it now drives more like a car than a bus. Mercedes-Benz has gone to town on the design. It looks fantastic. And they've also changed some weight aspects as well. 170 kilos lighter, and it now uses a different set of suspension. It's like a proper SUV now on a ladder frame instead of an old truck. So independent front suspension, coil springs at the rear with adaptive dampers. It all means that it's a proper SUV now. Have a look at this design. So new grille up the front there, new headlights with adaptive LEDs, new safety pack as well. And I love this too. You can see the indicator from the driver's seat because it is virtually a box at the front there. Being a G63 means you still get these wicked looking dual exhaust pipes out the side. They're at both sides and it sounds absolutely incredible. It still has that boxy shape, so you can spot this in traffic pretty easily. The back's also changed as well. We're talking about a squarer design here, new set of LED tail lights. And have a look at this, it's actually a usable space, not like a lot of the SUVs on the market today where you can't even use the boot that you're given. 454 litres of cargo capacity here, then those seats drop and it expands to almost 2,000 litres, and you've got a big aperture there as well, so you can stick virtually anything inside. If you do have rear occupants, they're going to like this new car because there is more legroom in the back too. Your mates aren't going to hate you if you relegate them to the back seat because it is now a much bigger space, 15 centimetres more legroom, and if you'd driven the previous G-Class, you'd know that it was always a cramped space to be in here with little elbow room. So that's all expanded, and it is proper luxury here. Have a look at this. Feels like a Mercedes-Benz should, despite the fact this is a utilitarian vehicle. The rows slide and fold as well, which is good news, and you also have your creature comforts, such as a third zone for climate control. You can also get heated seats in the back here too. You're gonna be spending most of your time in that seat right there, so let's check out the front. Before we jump into the front, I wanna show you this. So this is the mechanical linkage to close the door. Have a listen. It's properly cool, but the downside is that it's quite hard to close the door. So if you just do that, it sort of doesn't really work. You've gotta really slam it shut, which is why every time you hear me close a door on this car, it sounds like I'm abusing it, but it is what you need to do to actually close the door properly. Righto, have a look at this. This was the most depressing place to be inside a G-Wagon because it was crap. This is a different story now. Mercedes-Benz has gone to town here on technology and making this feel like a luxury car. And you need it because it's $247,000 plus all the options that you can add to it. And it feels like it's worth that much. It actually feels like a Mercedes-Benz. So head of the driver, you have two 12.3 inch screens and these display your nav and critical functions. You can customize those to display other things. But there's no MBUX, which is the all new Mercedes-Benz infotainment system. But you know, this thing's okay. You've got the hovercraft set up here which is a little tricky to use but saved by the voice recognition system you can literally tell it to do anything you want and it works You've got lashings of wood grain around the cabin and it feels really solid and well built even if you are pounding this thing on a gravel road a corrugated road everything holds together nicely in terms of four-wheel drive equipment you've got a front center rear differential lock it is a serious four-wheel drive and as you step down the range it has even more serious four-wheel drive gear so this will go anywhere as it is but it's also quite fun to drive in a straight line everything else is pretty straightforward you've got storage here you've got connectivity for your phones a keyless start system but not keyless entry which is a little bit stupid but the rest is fantastic you've got more width so you can fit in easily and more leg and headroom as well. But the most important thing is how this thing sounds. Let's go for a drive. In short, this thing drives really nicely and so much better than the last one. Under that bonnet is a four liter twin turbocharged V8. Makes 430 kilowatts of power 850 newton meters of torque and it's mated to an awesome nine speed automatic transmission that means that when you do get stuck into it, it pins you back in the seat and send you off in the stratosphere in fact when this is accelerating at full tilt it is literally at full tilt it looks like it's about to take off to space Unlike a lot of Mercedes-Benz cars, this doesn't have air suspension. That poses a few problems because it is a porker, 2,500 plus kilograms. So it is massively heavy. 
and that means that you need to manage that weight when it's going around corners. So 295 wide tyres on all four corners, 40 profile, and then you've got standard coil springs at the back and then an independent front suspension setup. You do get adaptive dampers, so that means when you're in this comfort mode, it is nice and smooth, but then you can go through your dynamic selector and then change to sport, sport plus, individual, or a snow and wet setting. So there is something there to suit every need. Once you're done laughing at the fact that this will beat pretty much anything at the traffic lights, slide the dynamic selector into Sport Plus, get on that throttle, and this becomes another beast altogether. It's not the most dynamic car in the world, which means when you do find yourself a couple of corners, it is a little bit sloppy, but it is incredible how well they have made a two and a half ton beast handle some of these corners. It is absolutely incredible and it sounds bloody amazing. How quick is it in a straight line? Well, Mercedes-Benz says it's four and a half seconds, but you have to see what that looks like when it's actually doing it. So yesterday, we found ourselves a spot to test it out. One of the best features of the G63 AMG is that engine and how quick it is. And I'm gonna put this into context. We've found a super safe place here to test it. We'll drop her into Sport Plus. I have the V-Box running there. All I'm gonna do is load it up, drop the throttle, and then we're gonna hold on tight. So here we go. Oh. It's moving. <laughs> Holy crap. That is quick. This thing is a monster. And that noise is incredible. What do we do there? 4.5 seconds on wet. That is absolutely awesome. While it is all fun and games driving this car, let's get a bit more serious about spending a quarter of a million dollars and some of the negatives. And there are a couple here that are really irritating me. There is a whistling sound coming from there somewhere. I don't know if it's the wing mirror or one of the seals not quite being sealed correctly. Uh, when I got into the car this morning, the edge of the seat was wet because it drips down from the roof. I mean, stuff like that is just super annoying. And then on top of that, there's no proximity sensing to enter the car. So you've got to get the key out, unlock it, and then push the starter button. I mean, come on, it's 2018. Surely you could fit a proximity sensor to one of these doors. So there it is, a review of the world's most pointless car, but the world is a much better place with this in it. Sure, it'll never go off-road, it'll never be driven harder than a solid fang from the lights, but if you ever see one of these on the road, tip your hat to the legend that bought it and spent the best part of $300,000 on one of the world's greatest cars.